Hey everybody, I'm Barbazir and welcome to Shadowrun Hong Kong. So, Shadowrun Hong Kong is a tactical turn-based RPG and it's actually a very interesting game. Shadowrun itself, if you don't know, is a tabletop RPG that has been around for a pretty long time now and it's magic meets tech kind of future in a world ruled by mega corporations. And this is a third game in a series which started from Kickstarter. There was Shadowrun, then there was Shadowrun Dragonfall, and now we got Shadowrun Hong Kong. But these games are not connected with stories, these are standalone games, so you don't need to know the previous two to know what's going on in the third. Having said that, if Hong Kong is as good as the previous two games were, and I see no reason why it wouldn't be, it's going to be great. So, with that intro out of the way, let's get started and get into the game. Now, there are three difficulty levels, easy, normal and hard. I'm not going to play on easy, and hard is supposed to be for the second playthrough, so we'll go with normal. So, first we need to go through character creation and create our main character. Let's do it. We got five races to choose from. We got humans, we got elves, dwarves, orcs and trolls. You can see their base stats at the bottom. Humans get plus three karma and karma is basically experience that you spend on skills. That's what it is. The rest are fairly self-explanatory, but we'll talk about what these stats do exactly in just a moment when we get to stat selection. So we are going to play as a troll. That's going to be our main character. And we got six archetypes to choose from or classes basically. We can also choose or build our own class by mixing skills, but I'm not going to do that. So, we got Street Samurai, you can see key attributes at the bottom, so body and strength or quickness. We got Mage, we got Decker. Deckers are a class that's pretty important in every team. They hack into the Matrix, which is basically future internet. And you pretty much need one in every team. But we're not going to play as a decker. A troll would not be a very good class for deckers anyway. We also got shaman, which is also a spellcaster like a mage, but a slightly different one. We got a rigger, which is a pet class basically. And we got a physical adept. So that is what we're going to be. Because why the heck not? Because we want to smash things. <laughs> Let's have a look. Can we find a good portrait? Oh, this one looks pretty good. Alright, I like this one, and you'll see why in a bit. Okay, do we want to change him a little bit? We can go for a hairstyle. <laughs> yeah, but I like him to match our portrait at least a bit. So I don't really want a hairstyle. It's going to be a little bit awkward <laughs> if he has a hairstyle like this. But his portrait is like this. So we'll leave it at that. We definitely don't want a beard either for similar reasons. We could change horns. Let's have a look. What are the options? That looks fancy. Okay, let's go for this one. And we can continue to start. So, now we can spend our karma, which, as I mentioned, is kind of like experience that you get to spend on skills. And we're going to talk about what each of these attributes does. So, the way this works is that your level of the base attributes determines how high you can go in these skills. So I can get up to 5 in Cyberwave Affinity. If I want to get the 6th ability, I would have to raise my body skill to 6, which would cost me 6 karma. Raising it to 7 would cost me 7 karma, and so on and so forth. So body skill gives you plus 10 health for each point of body skill. Then we got quickness which is used to calculate chance to hit in ranged combat, and it reduces the chance to be hit by enemy attacks. Then we got Strength, which does exactly what you might think it does. It is used to calculate chance to hit with melee, and also thrown attacks. And it increases the damage of melee attacks, and it determines how far a grenade can be thrown. Then we got Intelligence, which is used in decking and rigging, so we don't really need this skill on this guy. It's also used to reduce chance to be hit by enemy programs in the Matrix. Then we got Willpower, which is used to calculate chance to hit with hermetic magic spells and casting attacks. 
and it helps boost resistance against certain magic attacks. And then we got Charisma. Unfortunately, this is at 1 for trolls, but it's a fairly important skill. It's used to calculate chance to control spirits, which is not something we need. But it also unlocks etiquettes, which are skills that affect conversations. So we can unlock the first one at level 2. And yeah, these are basically skills that determine how you behave in social situations. They unlock extra dialogue options. So we can pick one of these. We can pick corporate, security, gang. As you can see. Now, corporate is usually pretty damn useful. Because, if you don't know, Shadowrun is a word that's basically ruled by mega corporations. But each of these skills has its uses and unlocks different dialogue options. I'm not quite sure which one we want to go for. I might go for academic just because it's hilarious to have a troll with academic knowledge. Yeah, just for the heck of it. Let's go for academic. <laughs> We're a troll with academic knowledge because why the heck not, right? We could go for a second one, but that feels like a bit of a waste of karma. Charisma is not exactly a super important skill for our class. Definitely not. So, what do we want? We could also focus on strength skills. That's probably a good idea, right at the start. I'm not quite convinced that it's a good plan to spend our karma for willpower right away. Probably not. Alright, let's check strength skills. So, we definitely want close combat, that's for sure. That's the whole idea behind this character. So... We'll spend some karma here. Increase HP damage, plus 2. Minus 10% to hit. Pierces up to 2 armor. Now, as far as I know, armor is pretty damn good in this game. And having skills that counter armor, or can pierce armor, is really important most of the time. So we'll go for some of these. Now we'll need more in close combat to increase the maximum rank here. If we go for third one, additional AP damage. Okay. But no HP damage, so that's armor piercing. Let's go for that. Do we want unarmed? Critical damage percentage visible. Interesting. Roundhouse kick. <laughs> you don't want to get roundhouse kicked by a troll. Definitely not. And especially a troll that's twice as tall as you. That sounds like a really bad life choice. Can strike multiple targets in range. I like that, but we can't afford it. We have 15 more karma. So, I don't think I'm going to unlock any throwing weapons at all. Although, we could do it. Maybe. But I feel it's better to focus on close combat. And specialize in that. Alright, so do we want some spell casting? Maybe. Maybe not. How much can we pick up? Hmm. I'm definitely not an expert at building these characters, by the way. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, do we want some of these? Maybe not right away. Hand razor cyber weapon. That sounds awesome. But we can always pick that up later. Okay. Weakness. Well, dodge is a pretty useful skill. We should probably pick up at least some points in dodge. But I'm not going to spend karma on quickness. Yeah, maybe in the future, but not right away. Not right at the start. So anyway, back to close combat. Level 3. Do we want level 4? Overwatch. Okay. So level 4 in melee weapons will increase our chance of scoring critical hit when using melee weapons. But we only got 14 karma left. So let's go with a setup like this. 
That seems reasonable. We'll get level 3. That leaves us with 9 karma. And then... Hmm. I'm not sure about these casting skills. We don't actually have to spend all our karma right at the start. We can always spend it later, after we start the game. Oh yeah, we'll pick up the etiquette, so academic, because that sounds hilarious. Academic troll. Right, can we remove these? Yes, we can remove them. Alright, let's just keep some karma then. I assume I'll be able to spend it later. Unless, unless we want to raise our quickness to get more dodge. Well, having dodge is definitely useful. We don't want to get hit left and right. We could also go for that roundhouse kick. That sounds amazing, to be honest. But we don't have enough points. Alright, let's go for two points in unarmed. And we'll keep for karma. We can spend karma later at any time. So, this is fine. So, I already have an idea for this character. It's going to be a character that was in XCOM The Long War, Season 1. If you watch that, you might be familiar with him, and you might already know what I had in mind. So, we're going to use his original first and last name and his original nickname. So that's going to be Liang Chu, and his nickname if you're still not sure who I'm talking about, is Hulk. We're going to smash things. That's Hulk reincarnated in Shadowrun world. Alright, now we will go for the intro. You have one new message. Uh, hi. It's Raymond. I hope I have the right number. Look, I know we haven't spoken in a while, but I need your help. Remember the day I took you and Duncan off the streets? I told you that the past is just a story, that if you can just accept that, your past loses all power over you. Yeah, <laughs> I was wrong. I'm on my way to Hong Kong now, to finish something I should have faced a long time ago. And I need you with me. I know we're not blood, and we didn't leave things in a good place. But you and Duncan are the only real family I have. Please, if our past means anything to you, Meet me in Hong Kong right away. I'll explain more when you get here. I'm begging you. I'm almost out of time. Alright, so that was a rather cryptic intro. Looking forward to it. Raymond Black, the old man, gave you a home once. Took you and Duncan of the gang-ridden streets of the Barrens. Sheltered, educated, slapped sense into you both. Until you almost resembled productive members of society. <laughs> that sounds like Hulk, all right? And then you took off. Left it all behind. Landed behind bars for a time. Tried to start a new life after that. It's been eight years since you've heard Raymond's voice. Until out of the blow you got this cryptic message, a plea for help. Meet me in Hong Kong, right away. And wire to your account enough Nguyen to pay for the flight and then some. Nguyen is basically currency, which you probably guessed. The descent is rough. A squall comes out of nowhere, sending a solid sheet of rain punching into the suborbital transport. The plane finally skids to a halt at the edge of the Czech Lapcock tarmac. 
An hour later, you hail a water taxi to Victoria Harbor. Hong Kong looms ahead, pulsing with energy. And here we are, with Hulk. You step from the churning of the water taxi to the ponderous rocking of the docks, your stomach lurching at the transition. As soon as you're clear, the captain nods once and steers the small craft back into the harbor. The man never said a word, just handed you a worn brown duffel bag when you stepped on the board filled with gear, some stiff new body armor and a note. Better safe than sorry, D. Above, smog-thick clouds hang low in the sky, reflecting the lights of the city. The wind changes direction more than once, creating a heady stew of aromas. Diesel, sea salt, street food and filth. It's all you can do to keep your, to keep your in-flight meal where it belongs. Two figures stand waiting in the dim light of the pier. The first is a nork, lean with in-your-face muscles and the jaw made to break fists. The second is an elf, one hand resting casually against her hip. Raymond Black is nowhere to be seen. Duncan. Well, don't you look like shit? Duncan Wu, the closest thing you have to a brother. You haven't seen the man in eight years. Still as charming as ever. He greens. Green's not really your color, Liang. Doesn't go with that nice new armor I got you. As you open your mouth to respond, something shifts alarmingly in your stomach. A liquid bubbling sensation. Body free! Tough it out, don't know what you're talking about. Must be the harbor lies messing with you. <laughs> yeah, let's go for that one, since we don't have enough body skill. Must be. Guess you've got some of your old fortitude at least, he laughs. Considering how much synthothal we used to put you down, I'd be surprised if you couldn't handle a little chop. Anyway, we gotta go find Raymond. Where's the old man? Never showed up. Did you try him on calm? No clue where he might be? When was the last time you saw him? No sense standing around then. Where's the meeting place? Not far. Alright then. The woman standing beside him breaks in. We should get going, Duncan. Head back to the meeting point in case your dad shows up. Copy that, Serge. You his partner? Unfortunately, yes. Although partner's not the right word for it, exactly. I like superior officer better. <laughs> okay. I let him carry my coffee for me. I write my parking tickets. That kind of thing. The woman taps her chest with an armored finger. I figured I could use some backup. Don't know what Raid gotten himself into, and I wasn't sure you were gonna show up. You got something you want to say? Well, surprise, here I am. Of course I showed up. Okay. Surprise, here I am. Yeah, well, I wasn't so sure, you know. He shakes his head. Hey, look, I'm glad you're here, Liang. Seriously. But I'm gonna need some time to get used to having you around again. Been a while since I heard from you. Know what I mean? Memories of sleepless nights in a lockup flash by. Wondering if you'd ever see Duncan or, Ra or Raymond again. Wondering if you ever wanted to. And then, stepping in, stepping out of the daylight, suddenly free, the fallout of some obscure corporate restructuring, a few hundred million worth of apology from your former jailers, and a decision to start a new life. To leave the past behind, all of it, until now. I know I've been out of touch. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, we'll talk about it later, okay? Well, we've been out of touch just a bit, apparently. You could say that, yeah. Let's just find Raymond. He was supposed to meet us in the plaza, on the other side of this pier. The sooner we find him, the sooner you all can have a big happy family reunion over dinner. Yeah, sounds like it will be a happy reunion. Damn right. Ahead of you, Hong Kong rises serpent-like from the sea. Government and Megacorp coiled together. Everything in their basket of institutionalized corruption. No one can tell where the snake's body ends and its tail begins. That's what Raymond's used to say. Duncan turns and starts down the pier. Carter follows. 
Alright, we can actually move. So let's take a look around. If there's anything to find around here. Maybe, maybe not. Let's take a look around the interface. So, we got some objectives in here. Mission items. Not a lot of mission items so far. So, head to the meeting location. Keep the team alive. Okay. Not much else to be seen here. So, this is Hulk. That's our main dude. We can spend our remaining karma if we want to. But I'm not going to spend it just yet. By the way, if you're like a Shadowrun Games veteran and you got some suggestions, then feel free to post them below, I don't mind at all. In fact, I appreciate any suggestions. So, then we got our inventory. That's our gear at the moment. Not a whole lot of it. We got a very basic weapon. We got a flashbang grenade. Is this XCOM? <laughs> we got a basic med kit. We got Dog Wagon Trauma Kit. And Killing Hands spell. Unarmed damage increased by 3. Okay then. We can trade between our characters, which we can't do at the moment. They are locked. And cyberware, nothing to be seen right now. And we can save if we want to. Alright, so let's get back into it. And take a look around. Inspect. Fresh construction is expanding the harbor into the water. Corporate interests. Something something. <laughs> it was gone too fast. Corporate interests something something, that's it. So there's not a whole lot we can interact with around here. Apparently. I'm just looking around so that we don't miss anything important. Looks like we should maybe go this way. This looks closed. Nothing we can interact with. Locked gate. Well, unlock it then. The guard shack at the end of the pier is dark and empty. Duncan gives the gate a push, but it doesn't budge. It was open earlier. Looks pretty solid. Shouldn't there be someone here to let us out or something? Guess we'll have to find another way to reach the plaza. Maybe if you bang your head against it hard enough, it'll open. <laughs> that sounds more like our job, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that definitely sounds like our job. Well, shouldn't there be someone here to let us out? Yeah, smells a little funny, don't it? Apparently this whole place smells, as we could see earlier. Who knows, it's Hong Kong. Not exactly sure how things work around here. Come on, rookie, we can cut through the construction site. I hate it when you call me that. Alright, so we do have to use that gate after all, that's fine. We'll probably get to fight something pretty soon, because there is quite a lot of combat in this game, and it's pretty good. One of the reasons I like it. Security checkpoint. The gate is locked, but the nearby control panel appears accessible. Carter pulls it open with a metallic screech that pierces your skull, sending a new wave of pain down to your churning stomach. She examines the control panel for a moment, then throws Wu a backward glance. Looks like there's another way of the docks on the other side of the gate. I think I can bypass the lock. Okay, intelligence free, that's not something we have as a troll. Well, let her work. That was quick. Well, it dematerialized apparently, not just opened. She hacked it so hard that it just dematerialized into the matrix. So is there anything interesting around here? Oh, okay, movement apparently. Oh, hi. Shouting in Cantonese. Which we can't understand apparently. So we're in Hong Kong, but we don't understand Cantonese. That sounds like a bad plan. The group on the dock was fishing a package out of a speedboat when you surprised them. Now the package is at the bottom of the bay and the speedboat is disappearing into the distance. They close on you, red face and yelling. The light on the harbor gleams of their weapons as they approach. The leader shouts something in Cantonese, but it's too fast to make out. You're rusty. It's been years since Raymond's house and the language lesson that wouldn't end. The old man never spoke anything but his native language at home. Okay, 
You guys doing some late night fishing? The smuggler smiles. Oh yeah, we're fishing for assholes. How can you fish for yourself? That's interesting. Who points at their weapons? You're gonna need some better bait. All you're gonna catch with that is trouble. Try out your Cantonese. Well, if we're rusty, that's probably a bad idea. We're just passing through, why don't you put your guns away? Yeah, we are totally just passing through. Their spokesman laughs, looks at his crew. Hey, you talk good Cantonese, baby. Real authentic. <laughs> I know, right? He keeps laughing. Actually, you just told me you're gonna crap a gun. Yeah, into your face. Lone Star, put the guns down. So Lone Star is basically like a corporate police, because the world is ruled by corporations. There's no police in the strict sense. It's corporations doing it. And Lone Star is one of them, kind of. That was probably a terrible explanation, but hopefully it makes sense if you're not familiar with Shadowrun at all. The smuggler squints at Wolf's badge, then smiles at his friends. Never seen a badge like that before. Either it's fake or you're some kind of security guard. Either way, this ends the same. Yeah, for you. Alright, so turn-based combat. As I already mentioned, this should be interesting. Should be quite fun. So, we need to smash him in the face. We got our weapon. And we got our two skills. So, this is the basic melee weapon attack. Which adds plus one damage over the weapon's base damage. And we also got pommel strike. Which does additional armor piercing damage. But has minus 10% to hit. Okay, then we also got killing hands, but we got a weapon equipped, so that's not going to be very useful right now. And we also got Overwatch, which targets an area with your current weapon and selected ability. This ends your turn, and any enemy who moves or attacks while in this area will be counterattacked. It's basically like Overwatch in XCOM, it's fairly self explanatory. Alright, do they have some melee? Tattooed gunman, mage... Killing that mage sounds like a good idea, because mages are usually bad news. Most of the time they are bad news. Let's move into cover. There's some cover here, as indicated by the shield. So we can move in like so. And then we got aimed shot. Increases accuracy but by 15%. What's our chance to hit? Hmm. Do we want plus 15%? Maybe. The mage has medium cover. Let's take a named shot. There, we did some damage, not a whole lot. No, I could rush towards them, which might not be a terrible idea. Well, we have to smash their faces. Okay. And we do have a mage. Power bolt. Okay, that sounds useful against that mage. We probably want to be able to kill the mage on the first turn. Sounds like it's definitely not going to happen. And we missed. Alright. That happens. Okay. Yeah, we're flanked. Flanking enemies is really important in this game. As you could just see a moment ago. Okay, we are taking some damage. He's wounded. Well, we can't hit them just yet. Which is disappointing. And Duncan is stunned. Let's back up. I shouldn't have moved there to begin with, I suppose. I still want to kill that mage, if possible. Hmm. The gunman is flanked. Maybe. 25%. Or I could hit the thug. Let's move around. 99%, that's better. Okay, we got a crit, 20 damage. But we can't kill him, unfortunately. Okay, and here comes the mage. I probably shouldn't have rushed in with Hulk. <laughs> that was not a great idea. Did he just kill his own guy? Yes, he did. Alright, whatever floats his boat. Now, we should probably do some healing. Now, the way healing works is that it heals the last damage you took. So, if you took like two damage from the previous attack, that's what it will heal. But that's for actual healing skills. Our mage should have a healing skill. Not the medkits. Like these two right here. 
is probably a bit of a waste using them, but I'll use one anyway. Come on. There. And I still want to rush towards that mage if possible. Hmm. Well, we'll smash his face or her face on the next turn, hopefully. 61%. We missed! That happens. One more. That's better. Hopefully we'll be able to kill that mage on the next turn. That would be nice. 12 damage. Yep, we took some damage. He's actually a little bit low on health, but I want to kill that mage already. There, and now I could back up and heal myself again. Which might or might not work. 26% missed. That's unfortunate. That's better. Alright, now we can back up slightly and heal ourselves. That sounds like a good plan. I'll move towards him. You can't rotate the camera, which makes controlling characters a little bit annoying at times. Like, I want to move here, but I can't. Okay. Well. We can do it like this. And heal him back up. These guys are getting on my nerves already. We could smash his face. That sounds like a good idea. Six damage. And hopefully kill him if possible. 99%. 91%. Not worth going for extra 15% then. One more. There, he's down. We got one more dude. And he's a little bit too far away. Let's move closer. This is still too far away? No, it's not. Five damage. We'll take some more. Nope, he missed. More healing then. We're going to use up all the medkits at this rate. Oh yeah, we don't have enough action points for that. We can smash his face, but then we will definitely take damage. Let's do it anyway. Nope, we missed. That's very disappointing. Might be a good idea to just rush him now. We're going to take damage one way or the other. So what else do we have? We got aim. Increases the target's chance to hit by 8 to 12%. Does not stack. Okay. And it doesn't affect AoE abilities. Magical explosion that pierces up to 2 armor. Strip armor decreases target's armor by 2 or 3. Shares a cooldown with other sleep armor spells. Heal wound. Yeah, this heals all of the damage from the most recent attack. That's what I was talking about earlier, not necessarily the medkits. So we could do that if we got closer. Well, let's just hit that guy with power bolt. We won't kill him, even if we manage to hit. Well, we can heal up on the next turn. He missed us, that's good. So we can smash his face and still heal ourselves. That's what we're going to do. So heal wound, like so, plus 12, and now we can smash his face. 16 damage, nice. We'll need to hit him one more time. 99%. There, he's down. That was not the best fight of all times, but it was a good introduction of basic combat mechanics, I think. It will get better. Oh yeah, we can move. Alright. Can we do anything else in this area? I wouldn't want to miss anything important. What's this on the ground? Interesting. We can't interact with that. Okay. Is there anything we can interact with? Anywhere around here? Yes, there is. Okay. Oh, is this just the exit? Yeah, I think that's just the exit. Okay. Duncan and I have hopped of have hopped plenty of fences before. It will be fine. Why don't we just cut ourselves an opening? 
guess we better find another way through. Well, maybe there is another way through. Think you can get the gate open, Carter? What do you think? It will take me a few minutes, though. I thought she was a mage. She's competent. In Cantonese, Liang. What's with the lecture, Wu? I could tell you you couldn't follow... I could tell you couldn't follow everything those smugglers were shouting. You're rusty and that's dangerous. Only Cantonese from now on. Just like when we lived at Raymond's house. Those endless drills are about to pay off. Okay. He's coming back, won't be a problem. He nods, satisfied. At least you can still handle yourself in a fight. Did you dub it? Okay. Well, the gate is open. So, can we interact with anything around here? Doesn't look like it. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything we could possibly interact with. Alright, so I think this is a good moment to make a cut and finish the first episode. So, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to Shadowrun Hong Kong. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.